Have you ever been in situations in your career where you had to make like career defining decisions? Like, do you have those moments? Uh, Yeah, I have a couple. I got into a conflict with the White House when I was in the Pentagon, but I I really can't go into, uh, and they threatened me. Really? Um, For a couple of years, Alexander, my job in the Pentagon was funding all the super classified programs for the Air Force. Yeah, so you were a black world programmer, right? I was a black world programmer. And what that means is people that, supported me because they were the individual program managers. They would bring me the information. I would then brief at typically at the one star brigadier general level. I would then brief at the two star level, the major generals. And then once or twice a year, I would brief at the four star level to the very senior leaders in the air force as how we were, how these programs were advancing, how the money's, what we programmed, how they're being expended. And then twice a year or so with a technical expert, he and I would go up to Congress and brief only the key members who were cleared for what we were doing. But they had to approve the budget per se. And this was a case where um, there were some things that were happening that were not right, and we were not aware of it. Um, it was a, it was a kind of a thing that, um, had we been aware of it and realized who had made the decision at the president's level that we would more than heartedly support it. That's what we were about, but it, it uh, had all the appearances of some illegal activity and they threatened me. And I said, I'm going to the head of the air force, the four star and cause I'm seeing where you're taking money and that's air force money. Unless you tell me what it's for. Well, they backed down. Really? And they really? they eventually briefed the four star and the secretary of the Air Force because I said that's what you, you I said you're spending their money. It may be very important, which it was, yeah. but you have to show us that it's you know this is a legitimate use of the taxpayers' money and fully uh, within the level of the law. Do you suspect they were putting it into their own pockets? No, no, okay. have nothing to do. It, it had to do with President Reagan's vision of how do we better prepare the country in case something in the Cold War, there was a, a nuclear exchange. Huh. Now, I, how, do we, how do we try as best we can to make our democracy survivable? Right. So it's a, that's such a tough decision, right? Because that, so what I'm understanding is they took from the Air Force budget um, to put into a nuclear exchange to give them a advantage in the Cold it was War. actually was it was for if you it had nothing to do with the nuclear part of it okay it had to do how do you shelter the senior leadership in the united states including the congress and other key members so that out of it you hopefully might be able to survive and support whatever remains of the country after some kind of an exchange might have taken place. Oh, oh, oh okay. But that's very important, obviously, right? But yes. so they didn't have like built nuclear bunkers yet? No, they had them, but they were trying to modernize them and they were trying to make them much to have a plan. Okay. Because we had the bunkers, but it was what I would call ad hoc. Oh, I, we need to do something. No, yeah. there's a plan. And matter of fact, later on, when 9-11 took place, and I'm observing it, I'm in my brain, because I'm telling, I'm not, <laughs> even though I'm in a group that's, it was a very classified briefing, I, in my brain, I said, okay, this is what the president's going to do now. This is where he's going, because this is where we put stuff this is how he could communicate to the nation. This is, you know, this is what these different people are going to be doing. President Reagan wanted an organized plan that if something should happen, yeah. that people knew what they were supposed to do. As a, well, as a government official, not a nation. No, 
as a government official supporting a national objective. Now, that's the quote, potentially the illegal activity that, yeah, that you may have seen because they were taking the funds away, even though the intention maybe is you could um, respect, right? But how they were going about it was was not ethical. That's right. Because when you're taking money that comes from the taxpayers, there needed to be a, a trail of decisions that you saw that that rendered that this was what needed to, to take place. It wasn't just somebody with some wild idea uh, going off and doing something. Well, now, this is a, correct me for a moment, it's a $6 billion budget you were managing, right? That's correct. So you, the, it was obviously large enough, right? In the large enough number where you thought this, this is a big red flag. Uh, actually, the amount of money they were taking from us was, uh, I can't remember the exact number, but it was like 30 or 35 million. But see, I had complete visibility over okay. all the black money. Got it. And I saw money going somewhere where I approve it, but it had not been approved as far as I knew. And so I couldn't explain why money yeah. was leaving this particular account. And every transaction you had to approve. No, I didn't necessarily have to approve, but I monitored because the approval really came from the general officers. They, when they approved something, there was a whole thing that went with it that said, okay, Got when it. you approve this, these are the things that are going to occur. You and then there was people that, that worked for me or supported me. I supported them that monitor the individual transfers of money uh, and things like that as they expended it. I, de 